And new business certainly comes in and loves the, the look and feel. It doesn't feel like a 20 year old building at all. How do those lessons learned, again, empowerment mm. and balance now that you're in a position of managing others in a building that never sleeps? It's easy to succumb to burnout, I would, I would yeah, think, in a sure. building like yours. So how do you uh, guard against that and make sure that those underneath of you do have some kind of balance yep. and then empower them to be able to complete tasks without being specifically told by you to complete them because yeah. there's, there's just too much going on to do that. Yeah, that's a great question. And I think part of that is a lot of this personality profiling that we're doing within our team because um, while I like to operate at a certain octane, that's not sustainable or even sort of, um, I guess, what other people would be interested in doing. And everybody has a different pace. And so I feel like the more that we can be conversational about where your thresholds are and being really uh, vocal about I need to take a day or it's too much helps me because I don't necessarily recognize that and I have to appreciate that I might work one way uh, where there isn't a lot of balance between work and life. There's more kind of harmony in do I give everything to everything I'm doing and this concept of being really present I think is important because balance is hard. You don't give 50% to work and 50% to life. You have to give what you think is meaningful to your work and what's meaningful to your life and to all these different buckets of family and fun and travel. And you have to make the things that are priorities for you priorities some way, somehow, right? And so um, it's really trying to understand how everybody sort of works and again, where their thresholds are. And knowing also that at Staples Center, we have up to 250 plus events a year. So you're also acknowledging coming into something like this, that it's not a restful job. It's not something that is slow paced or moderately paced. We work in a very fast paced environment, but the hope is we don't operate at a place where it's it's frenzied or it's out of control um, and so I think that's that's always something that we have to massage and we always have to get better at but trying to be mindful of it but trying to stay in the present moments when I'm at work I give everything to work but when I'm not at work I try to give everything to those interactions and those people and those um, situations and I think that helps it helps a lot can't let you out of here without talking about the arena right uh, just recently correct my math a year ago finished the suite renovation i think it was two years ago now actually time flies right so f catch us up to date on that first of all uh remind us what that renovation was mm -hmm. and then let us know how it's performed and if there's anything in the pipeline that you can share moving forward sure i mean we're we're coming up on being a 20 year old building and with all of that foot traffic um you know, there's a lot of wear and tear, but I feel like the building is is standing up really well to uh, the test of time and technology. And uh, thankfully, we have a lot of partners and um, sponsors that bring in a great influx of technology and we're willing to try things. And so some have worked, some we replace, some we um, innovate on even more. And so I think that's always a work in progress. The um, the renovation was amazing. It was a lot of cosmetics. It was carpet. It was refreshing the walls. It was putting new covers on. Um, it was getting new furniture and a different sort of look and feel in the suite that was a lot more contemporary and uh, kind of a carbon fiber look. If you go to like, you know, cars and sports cars and sort of that model, it was, it's very sleek, it's clean and very functional. So that was sort of the, the direction we took with the renovation and it's gone very well. There was obviously some hiccups. We removed a lot of the couches and then realized after the fact that people love that couch. And so we, we sort of did some workarounds and we brought some couches back in and we allowed for some other customizations and things to happen in the suites where I think customers now are, are very appreciative of that. And, um, and new business certainly comes in and loves the, the look and feel. It doesn't feel like a 20 year old building at all. Right. So, and the other thing too is it's a it's great to have that that space and to make it conducive for networking and 
business and all of these other things that are happening. But at the end of the day, we want to provide something that's exciting on the ice, the court, and the stage because that's where all of the attention generally is is drawn to. And certainly if people are present in the conversations, they're, they're here, they're not looking at the walls and the seats. And so it's nice to have that as a, as a background, but also I feel like there's so many other touch points and things that are happening in the suite that take away from all the focus just being on that. Luckily in some cases, but I feel like we are certainly current with with the look and as far as future renovations, I think, you know, our CapEx every year is something that uh, we all sort of contribute to how do we make the building better. And so yeah, there's some lounges that we're looking at. There are more public spaces that we're looking at improving. Obviously technology is always at the forefront of our conversations and so I would say those are kind of the, the key things moving forward. And, um, you know, always a work in progress. But I still feel like, no, we're not going to be that new, shiny, brand new arena. Um, but I think that there is still something to being the sort of original arena in the area. And that, um, that feel sometimes people get nostalgic about, oh, I remember when we had this and I remember that. And, and not that we have to be a relic. But um, well, but it's certainly truly there's become an icon. It's right. iconic. It's become yeah. a flagship. It's a staple. A no, staple. No pun intended. It's become a staple yes. for the NBA and the NHL and any major touring act. Yes. So that's 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 how I think of it. I don't think of it as a relic. Yeah. Well, we don't like to either. She's, she's <laughs> held up pretty well. She's gotten a lot of a lot of wear and tear. But we're always looking at improving. We're always looking at, obviously, and I think you don't have to do a lot of patchwork when you do a lot of consistent maintenance on the building. And I think we have an amazing operational team where for as much as we're getting used and doing turns in the building for double headers or from conversions, it is our staff that maintains just an impeccable cleanliness and quality of service to the building that we haven't completely kind of fallen apart and you don't see a lot of the the tread that you know you might in other buildings where there isn't that same sort of care and attention so and that's what we've always heard from lee yes right? absolutely that comes from the top where we don't it's not like five years ten years goes, goes by and it's like we need a major renovation because you've made the investment year to year to keep things current. yes is that fair to say day to day i mean there are constantly people in the building so there's uh no shortage of workers and people that are in there just making sure every light bulb and every seat and every cushion is being maintained and so it is a it is an annual and day-to-day -day grind but they do a great job of it and lee certainly at the top makes sure that um, everybody is on point for well, sure I know this is essentially day one, <laughs> but in closing, I wanted to ask you, is there anything related to a vision for the association over the next year, two years that you've been able to give some thought to and mm -hmm. where you would like to see us move into and how you plan on leading the association as president of the board? God, that's a great question. I've given it zero thought. Um, I'm really excited uh, for the sort of transition and I, I certainly have big shoes to fill because this organization has grown. Uh, the conference is, I think, 150 people bigger than our biggest year ever. And so that means that we just have this much wider audience. And I think it's really keying in on who's attending. So much of what we do in sports is trying to understand who our buyers are, right? So I think for us, it's really understanding who's attending and how we can better service their needs. And I think it's also a great place for recruiting and having transparency around like the salary survey that you guys just did. I think that's hugely impactful. Uh, the more that we have visibility and uh, transparency into sort of how the league is is moving, and there's going to be some outliers, um, and I'm not saying that we have to create a, a level of, of standards, but there should be some sort of um, floor and, and ceiling around what we're doing and certainly making sure that um, the best talent lands in the right places and not being territorial with our resources, but to make this really a place to, to come and to have open sharing so collectively our industry gets better. So beyond that, I think it's really, you know, a lot of me trying to learn initially and then trying to listen and then take that and try to grow what's already an amazing organization. And I feel like Bill's vision for optimizing our footprint um, nationally to take that 
to London is going to be huge, and I'm really excited for that. I think there is certainly a lot of room for growth in that market, and not just because they can learn for us, from us, but I think that there's so much that we can be and should be extrapolating from the European markets where they just have strong footholds on their fan base and their experiences and um, creating more insight into how they're doing things I think makes sports in general that much stronger. It's the, the greatest common denominator I think globally where right now we've got the World Cup and there's not a bigger sport that I think um, just pulls countries and people together um, than that. So um, really trying to double down on our efforts uh, internationally and then just making sure that domestically we, we stay strong and innovative and that we're paying attention to who's coming, right? And why pretty, they're here, so. Pretty damn it. good answer for not giving it much thought. <laughs> well, the excitement that you've expressed is equaled on this side of the table. We're very excited to have you on board. Uh, well, you've, you've already been rowing in this canoe for a very long time. But have it's been you, a fun ride. To have you be the captain now is very exciting for us as well. So we look forward up. to the year to come. Thank you Thank so you much. Michelle.